Grab your art supplies. I'm gonna be drawing the mouth in profile or from the side step by step with you today. All you're gonna need is a sketchbook, number two pencil will do you just fine, and an eraser. Let's go ahead and get started. I am working with a number two pencil. That's the same thing as the yellow pencil you probably have laying around the house somewhere. If you've got an H, which is a lighter pencil, it would be nice to start out and get the initial guidelines with that. And eventually when we're down to the shading and getting really dark details, then you could even use something like a 3B or a 4B or a 6B pencil. But worst case scenario, just your good old fashioned number two, it's gonna do you real good. So. Here is the mouth we're gonna be working with. And, oh man, the mouth is the trickiest part of drawing the face and profile. The first thing I do whenever I'm drawing mouths is I actually ignore the mouth. I'm gonna start by finding the angle from the chin to the nose. We're not gonna draw the nose again in this video. That was the last video. But I want a suggestion of where it is because that upper lip needs to be placed correctly for this to all look right. So I'm gonna close one eye, hold my pencil up to the image, and I'm looking for the angle of the line between where the tip of the nose would stick out and the chin. And on this model, I'm seeing it about like so. However large you make these initial guidelines, that's how big the mouth is gonna fit on the page. I don't know about you, but I've started so many drawings where the drawing changed shape as I went along. So go ahead and mark where the chin is touching your pencil and where the nose is touching your pencil. So for me, I'm gonna say the top of the nose is gonna be about right there. And the chin is touching my line, oh, maybe about right here. And then the mouth is, it looks like, slightly, almost right in the middle is where I'm seeing the um, line of the lips. So I will measure what is halfway. That's halfway down this pencil, is that correct? I'm gonna find halfway, halfway. Honestly, it doesn't need to be perfect. Our faces are always moving, even when you're doing a portrait, as long as you're not drastically off, gonna end up looking pretty good. So this line is representing um, about the lower tip of the nose. I'm just gonna suggest the curve of it right here. I don't want you to get caught up in the nose. This is a mouth drawing video, not the nose drawing video. This is suggesting where the line between the lips is gonna be, and this is kind of the bump of the chin. Now, one thing that really helps me with mouths is paying more attention to the negative space in between the profile, the lines of the contour of the face or the outline of the face, and this imaginary angle line that I've drawn here. So if this woman's face has an angle like so between the nose and the chin, what shapes am I seeing underneath there? I'm seeing almost like a 90 degree drop from underneath the nose to where her upper lip is. I'm looking at the angle and the lip isn't going to come out and touch this line. There's a good bit of space there. And how about the negative space between the, the two lips? This lip curves down and creates this kind of, almost like a bird sort of shape. And the lower lip curves down and then it's aligned way back here with the back of the nostril. So I'm just kind of, this is not mathematically mapped out. So we're kind of estimating. I would rather get the wrong thing on the page and have the drawing incorrect with my initial guidelines so that I can then come back and check it and adjust. But you've got to get the wrong lines on the page first so you can fix them instead of not drawing or just feeling frozen and unable to do anything because that happens way too often. People just freeze. So don't do that. Go ahead and just make some marks. So I've got my lower lip comes down kind of like a curving vertical 
and that lower indent below the lower lip curves with a much broader opening pretty close to the bottom of the lip. Pops up and it's gonna curve in. Is, does that look right? Not quite. You can see how I'm really sketching things out here. Usually I'm quite against these little sketchy lines I'm making. I'm like, just make a line and let it be wrong and move along. That's really helpful for um, drawing quickly and training yourself to draw accurately over time. So I think this is a pretty steep line. I think I'm making it a little too wide and then a bit more pop here and then allow the chin to come out. So I am giving you more than just the mouth, right? This is going to be a little bit of chin, a little bit of nose. But if the mouth isn't placed in the right spot, then what's the point? So I'm going to just let this be for now and compare how this initial lay-in um, matches the drawing. So let me recheck that angle from the nose to the chin. Pretty close, pretty close. How about the length? I'm gonna see, does this length match the upper lip um, in the image. Yeah, they're just about the same, honestly. There's a lot of just abouting and almost and close enough happening if you haven't noticed already. Okay, how does this distance compare to the upper lip alone? Just that curve coming down. Seeing the upper lip as that long, about the same as a little more than half of this. So if this is a little more than... This might be longer. Okay, I had a feeling that this line was off. So it seems like this pops out and then curves in even more. So that means I'm gonna scooch this line down. Fixing as you go. One of the most important things you can learn if you really wanna get this accurate. Okay, and is that angle right? something like that. Now we've got this beautiful kind of tucked in shape, drops about down. Let's see, the height of that lip is longer than the upper lip and shorter than the skin above the upper lip. So this be longer than that and shorter than that. So I do think this should come down a little bit more. And that's probably why this angle wasn't working last time. Let's try it again now. Swooping inward. Kind of this wide swan-like curve down to a strong chin. I'm okay with this. Is it perfect? No, but if I wanted it to be perfect, I would take a photograph. But this is a drawing, not photography class, so let's continue on. Now we're gonna draw the line where the lips meet between the upper and the lower lip. So I'm just going to analyze the flow of this line. It seems like this curves a little bit up and then down and swerves up again. So every person is gonna have a slightly different lip line. This line usually is not particularly wide at all. It, I'm noticing on this model, it does go farther out in an angle than her nostril. And although we haven't really carefully mapped out the nose, I'm comfortable saying it looks close enough to my estimate. It'll work for our purposes today, which is just the structure of building the mouth. So one thing I really recommend whenever you're drawing mouths is not to have a hard edge or a sharp outline with the lips themselves. Just like when we drew the nose, you wanna shade gently and subtly, really paying attention to the nuances of shading. 
So I'm still using my 2B pencil. I'm using the flat edge of the lead instead of the sharp tip to create just a shadow. And I'm matching the shape as best I can. Seems like it gets darker, has a little, that little triangle of where the, it's called the philtrum dips down. This is your philtrum. Shade that a little bit. Follow what you see. Again, just softly using the wide edge of the brush instead of making a harsh line. If I were to come in and create a line like so here, oh, it would not look good. So soft shading, blend it with the finger if you like. The darkest line of the lips is almost always the line where the lips meet. And it doesn't have to be, as you can see here, again, not a hard line, just a cartoon-like high contrast line. This is gonna really softly shade between the upper and lower lip. I'm noticing it gets even darker right up here. Still not a hard edge line. Very soft around the corners of the mouth. For the bottom of her mouth, if I squint, I see actually a much darker shadow underneath her lower lip than I do on the lower lip itself. And in general, the lower lip is always brighter because at the angle that it's at, it tends to catch the light. And the upper lip is more in shadow because it's angled downward. There is still quite a bit of shading here in the, up, in the lower lip. So I'm going to squint and try and follow the light and dark pattern. Still using the side of my pencil to kind of lightly map in so I can a change as needed. I'm seeing some textured bright highlights over here, especially I'm gonna go really light there. It gets darker right here in the middle of the lip and a little bit lighter on the farthest edge of the lip. I'm just seeing this darker flat plane where the lower lip is going to dip down. And it's almost as if these lines wouldn't be connected. There's a darker shadow that kind of dips in here. And if this line were to continue, it wouldn't touch here. It kind of curves in and that curves in there. It's this woman's particular mouth. Everybody's mouth is a little bit different. It's not about following some set of rules to draw every mouth exactly the same but to pay attention to the values and the shapes and the lines of the particular person you're looking at. Smudge, smudge. And after you got this light and dark roughly in, pattern roughly in, we can do a little bit more subtle shading. So since I've been using my fingers, I've got a little haze of graphite stuck on my finger. I can use that to get the second to lightest value on the value scale, so close to white, not totally white. Shade in there. And that's where I want to just suggest like some skin color that's not totally washed out in white. She's got a really interesting kind of dimple in her chin here, so I am gonna swoop that in with a shadow using my fingers again to blend. You could use a paper towel or a soft cloth for that. And I'm gonna take my, my kneaded eraser here, knead it a little bit, get it soft, and come in with the sharp little tip to create some texture highlights in the lip. It's really white right here on the side of the lip. So if I get that smudging out around the side, it'll really make that pop. So tempting to come back and finish the nose so that it gives a little more um, context for the mouth, but I'm gonna switch, focusing on the mouth, to my 3B pencil. If you had a 4B or darker, this would be a good time to use it. And now I wanna really come in and pump up my darkest darks. So I've got a general guide of where I want the lights and darks, but this is where I'm gonna be very particular about what goes where. This is a little bit darker on this whole upper lip area. Really pumping up to the darkest dark I can possibly get now. Seeing really a dark. 
dark splash right here. It doesn't follow the full shape of the lips. I'm only gonna draw that dark area where I see it, nowhere else. There is a bit of a highlight here. This seems like it might have ended up being too long, but oh well. I might even pop that highlight out a little bit more with a bit of an eraser and some smudging. And I definitely want this area where the lower lip is sort of coming in to meet the lower lip to get a little bit more shadow. There's some lip texture happening here. A bit more shading here. You, you'll notice that the lips have these tiny little textured lines running up and down vertically, and that can help really create your texture of a lip effect looking to see where these little vertical creases in the mouth fall. Coming in as needed to pop out those highlights. Shade in other areas. This does look a little darker here. And this is really a lot darker. I'm still not quite as dark as it needs to be. It's like a little clip. Well, this mouth, much like a nose floating in the middle of your page, looks a little odd when it's just there by itself. One thing that I do really like to do to frame the features is to create a little box to add contrast between the feature and the background. So here's my little box and I'm going to pump up the background. In the image we see the photograph has a black background which really creates a sort of renaissance effect, kind of old fashioned um, high drama. So I'm gonna really pump up the darkness around her face. If you really got off here, also this would be a good time to come in and change the shape of the contour of the face or the outline of the face. So if your chin was sticking out too much, you could whoop, pop it back. It's kind of like a little opportunity to make corrections. And once I have that there, move your page as needed to easily come in and shade to make this whole background darker and you'll see how it really pops out the details. It makes this look much more three-dimensional. Three-dimensionality really comes from us seeing the light and dark pattern, how an object reacts when it's hit by the light. So when you have a lot of light and dark contrast, really makes things look more 3D because it shows that it's got to be taking up volume and space for light to be hitting it more strongly in some areas and lighter in others. Take your time getting that as dark as you'd like it to be, but you'll notice already how much more interesting this page is going to look with that little bit more drama of a background with this mouth set in a little bit of a setting, even if it's just a black square. This is definitely a stylistic choice for your sketchbook. Up to you. Make it look real snazzy by erasing all of the smudges everywhere. This can get messy, so Consider how what order you do this in for lights and darks. If you're left-handed or right-handed, if I was going that direction, I would have smudged everywhere.
And there you have it. We have the mouth drawn in profile and we're using the essentials of learning to draw anything, looking for the big shapes first, mapping out the relationships of the proportions, coming in with a lightly drawn in map of the lights and darks or where the values are on the page, and finally coming in, getting the tiny details and framing the piece, adding in the background as needed, and there you have it. So I hope you were able to draw along satisfactorily here. I would love to see what you drew. So please check out my free art school, link in the description below, and you can actually upload your picture, just snap a photo of it, upload it into the group. I can respond directly to see how you did, any tips that can help you in your drawing journey, and you'll find a lot more resources in there, as well as a really cool community of other people learning to draw, just like you. So check it out. Great job today, and I will see you in our next video where we're going to dive into a series of drawing the face from a three-quarter view. See you there.